Hi, this is Dr. Kay Sweetser from San Diego State University, and today I'm going to talk about how to do a power analysis using an online calculator in order to determine the right sample size for your cells. So um, ethically, there are a few reasons why you might want to track your sample size. Take, for example, if you are doing some sort of medical type of experiment and you are either uh, administering as a treatment a experimental drug or as an alternative treatment you are withholding treatment for a particular drug. In cases like that you don't want to oversample your population because while you have accepted a minimal degree of risk you certainly don't want to put the population uh, at any additional risk more than you need to in order to gain the knowledge that you're seeking. And so you want to be uh, really judicious with regard to making sure that you're only um, uh, filling your experiment with the right number of people per experimental cell. In the social sciences, a lot of times we actually have to pay for our research subjects. And so in those cases, you want to be very um, uh, frugal with your budget and you want to make sure that you're not wasting money on extra subjects when you don't necessarily need those subjects. And so by doing a power analysis in both of these cases, uh, you are going to be able to see how many people you need per uh, cell size. This is also helpful in a survey to find out how many total people you might need to fill out your survey. So I'm going to use an online calculator here and this is the powerandsamplesize.com calculator and then I am using the um, particular calculator that is for testing one mean and it is a one sample one-sided um, uh, power analysis here. So there are a couple of numbers that you're going to need to put into the calculator. Uh, basically the first thing we want to focus on is a value for our dependent variable. Um, so you're going to need two different readings on that dependent variable. The first reading you're going to need is a value for what you just expect in the normal world. What is what is the everyday, there's no treatment kind of control group reading for the dependent variable? And um, additionally, what is the standard deviation that goes along with that? Um, and then also, what is the observed mean in your current group of the um, folks that you're looking at? So um, I have a data set where um, I did a little experiment here and I'll go ahead and show you um, what the uh, different cells are in this particular study. So in this study um, we showed people a Netflix um, ad at, laid out like a Wall Street Journal uh, newspaper um, online uh, story and it was a native advertisement. And so the native advertisement either um, had sponsorship information at the top or it did not have any sponsorship information at all and it just appeared like it was a regular Wall Street Journal news article. So the, I'm going to treat the dependent variable um, in this study. Let me set it up here uh, to get the mean score for you. Means, oops. So if I come down here, um, I'm going to make this variable that I have that's called uh, perceived selling and persuasive intent, sell intent, as my overall variable that I'm going to try uh, to use as my dependent variable. All right, so um, what I want to do is I need to get a mean score not only on the overall um, uh, worldview, which will be the um, 
the ad without sponsorship. This is like what we would expect just in the general world or what the ad would be like with the sponsorship, um, which would be uh, this particular data set. So because I only have two cells here and I need a mean score on each, um, I'm going to run a uh, t-test really quickly because that's going to be the best way to figure out what each of these things are. So I have cell over here in the grouping variable. I defined the groups as one and two for cell one and cell two. And then I have set up here um, my uh, cell int um, as my test variable. Okay, so what I'm really concerned about is uh, my mean score and my standard deviation here. Um, so I'm going to kind of pull this one right down here and then I'm going to pull the calculator where I can just put these guys in um, at the same time. So I was saying that my normal worldview, um, what I would expect uh, overall would be the native ad without the sponsorship. So that's that's the um, sort of everyday mean. This is what we would expect. And then the standard deviation goes right here in the standard deviation and the standard deviation will be plugged in right there. And then I'm going to put in the, if we say that this newspaper article um, is sponsored by uh, Netflix, then what is the mean that we see for that? And that is going to be um, the null hypothesis mean. So I have plugged in here into my power analysis, sample size calculator. I'm plugged in my everyday world expected uh, sort of control group mean and its accompanying standard deviation. And then in the middle for the null hypothesis mean, I've plugged in what my um, treatment group uh, is observing at the moment. So um, I'm going to leave uh, the power and I'm going to leave the type 1 error um, uh, presets that they have set up in this calculator in there. And then I'm going to press calculate and then sample size. It tells me I need 47 people per cell. And so as you can see down here, I have 55 people in one cell and 51 people in another cell. So I did a little bit of oversampling, but it's certainly not enough to be a problem. So this is uh, overall a good experiment and I can stop collecting data and I can now move on to my analysis phase. So this is how you use um, a uh, sample size power analysis calculator. And to do this, of course, you need the mean of uh, the expected mean of the dependent variable along with its standard deviation, and then the actual observed mean of your particular treatment group um, to go in the null hypothesis there. And so that is how we calculate this. Happy sampling.